in his mind and his head right now. It stands to reason that everyone votes against yeah. him here. I don't think any sane person would vote for Marine King here. Uh, not even Kanata, who does sometimes go insane with his predictions. Yeah. So this this match, I feel, is going to be very reminiscent to the match that we saw with Maru versus Creator, two other former teammates that yeah. faced each other in re recent times. You were talking about how Maru is known it for was, making people cry. That game was so depressing, man. I think it was you and me casting yeah. that one. And they were joking around in the chat before they got into it. And Creator was so focused on beating his former teammate, and then he got crushed. And Maru did not hold back at all. Maru's one of these guys that... I don't, he just doesn't hold back, man. Especially against guys, you remember the game against Myungshik, where he just continuously, like, three units away, three units away. He wasn't even getting that much damage done. In fact, he was getting no damage done, and he still crushed Myungshik, and then he BM'd him so hard that it was the most upset I had ever seen Myungshik be, ever. Notice that Marine King's record versus uh, Maru is two and four, and, uh, you know, these former teammates are going to go at it again here. I hope Marine King doesn't get too emotional here, regardless of, uh, of how this match goes. I would expect to see an aggressive timing attack, though, out of Maru. It is Cactus Valley, though, so it's a bit tougher to do, like, an all-in or a proxy. Marine King here, 3 and 12 and 0 and 7 versus Terran. Yeah, that's the big matchup for him, where he just cannot seem to get wins. Uh, we said it before, it was one of our early viewpoints. Uh, this guy is 0 and 10. He's on a 10-game losing streak. Uh, you know, stretching into last year even. So this guy definitely has to shore up his TBT, and he's going up against one of the best Terrans in the world, uh, number one or number two right now. You could compare him to Dream at this point, Maru. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. It's going to be a hard game for Marine King. I hope he has something planned, something tricky that Maru's not going to expect, because honestly, I don't see Marine King winning a game against Maru, uh, a straight-up game, ever, to be honest. Never, ever, ever in a million years, Valdez. Well, Mars got to get his sound blockers on here before we get this game started. Looks like he might be just verifying something here before we get into this one. But uh, yeah. in fact, Marine King's not even in the lobby yet. Yeah. So going to have a, a small delay here. Possibly Marine King spending a little bit of extra time to practice or something. I'm not really sure. But there he is. Jumps in the lobby. We should get this one started in just a minute. All right, Valdez, this is a very important match for Marine King's confidence, no doubt. A big shocking loss here would definitely be another blow, not only to his Terran versus Terran confidence, but his recent early confidences. The guy has cried too many times, man. He's been through a lot. Let's hope he can turn things around today. Let's see if he can bring this win in here for MVP to tie it up. Mario's going to take this one. Marine King joking around, trying to go with Protoss at first, but now he's tearing. Let's go to this TVT right now on Cactus Valley between these two friends. Down here in the bottom left in the red for the Jin Air Green Wings, one of our Terran players here, it is Maru. Funny his shirt actually says uh, short man on yeah. it. I never noticed that before. Up to the top left in blue, it's Marine King for MVP. Still known lovingly by his fans as Marine King Prime, MKP. MKP. <laughs> um, so we are at vertical spawns here, 8317. Uh, reasonable split for the fan vote but uh you know the thing about this map is if you get cross spawns you play a totally different game than when you get uh, vertical spawns because air distance is much shorter drops are, are much more effective banshees are much more effective uh, you you have a lot more escape routes for those types of units as well whereas if you're playing a you know cross map sometimes you get caught by ground units in the middle of the map, watchtowers mm. there. There's so many other factors to consider. Yeah, a very, very big map. I like how you were saying that Maru would go for some kind of aggressive build if it weren't this map, because I think it was innovation that he did it to on Bonnie Research Station, two-player map. He just went like proxy marauder against innovation, a guy who at the time was 
number one or number two, you know, up there with Maru because Dream was kind of like floating at number three and number four at that yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I, I think we're going to see Marine can go into a CC first, it looks like here. It's a risky move, but it's very Marine King like. <laughs> Standard Marine King play. You can tell Maru is definitely having some wrist pains today. Um, just taking a look at his camera. Saying in the chat that he said he, he was feeling like it was a, he was just not feeling real well today. Um, and uh, Marine King actually uh, mentioned that uh, Maru was number one on the ladder. Not yeah. sure if that's confirmed or true, but. Uh, and I think Maru said that it was just luck or something. Yeah. In typical Maru fashion. We were just watching that chat pretty hard beforehand because. It's really important to know what kind of mindset Marine King is, especially going into a game like this. Because Maru often looks distraught, but it just doesn't matter. Like, sometimes it looks like he can't <laughs> yeah. even see. He's, like, rubbing his eyes every few seconds, but he still just wrecks his opponents. Lucky Scout here, by the way, for Maru. He's going to see this right away. Yeah. This is part of the reason why you actually don't like the uh, four-player maps yep. at times. Uh, this is the only four-player map we have in the pool right now. Deadwing, kind of a three-player one in terms of spawns. There's yeah. only two other possible spawns your opponent could be in. Is he, is he just going to harass that CC? I think he is. Yeah. So we see Maru. He gets the scout, and he immediately makes a Reaper to try to come over here very, very fast, deal with some of these units. And this SCP is getting very low. Marine King's not responding to this just yet. He brings another SCP down, but it takes three, actually, not just two, to finish this. One more hit will do it. He loses it. Okay, oh, he was, boy. He was so close to finishing it that it's, it's okay. I, f I thought for a second that Maru would even consider bunkering that CC because he's got that Reaper on the way. He commits to two Reapers. And uh, with this Hellion coming across the map as well, he could do so much damage with this. Marine King needs to take this very seriously. Yeah. Maru, he gets that lucky scout, and he's just going all out aggression, all out harass here. He's making as many Reapers, as many Hellions. He's got both of his gas. He's going to go straight into Banshees as well. Oh, look at this. Using the SCB to fight and tank some of that Marine fire. It's got 45 hit points worth of health to fight with. And once he has two Reapers over here, can do a lot more with the Hellion supporting as well. This oh, yeah. is a bit scary here for Marine King. It's going to be two Reapers and a Hellion versus four Marines that are popping out right now. And Marine King has to be very, very careful to split up those Marines. You do not want the AoE from the Hellion to hit those guys. Looks like he may use the second Reaper to scout. Oh, nope, coming out to fight a little bit. Let's Good. see the Micro here. The focus on the Hellion. It gets pretty low. Good control here by Marine King, actually, making sure those Marines are fanned out the right way to avoid that Hellion lineup. Uh -oh. And actually, uh, Reaper in a bit of trouble here. I don't think he should be able to escape. Ooh, gets that weakened SCB <laughs> from earlier. Nice target fire. Oh, man. <laughs> Marine King not going for the repair on that guy. So at the same time, another Reaper comes across the map. And we are going to have Banshees with Cloak as the follow-up. Maru at this point is trying to take out as many Marines as possible to allow his Banshees to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, if you can take out those Marines or even damage them, the Banshees yeah. are going to be so much more effective. And uh, if he can actually draw them this far out as well, I mean, they're going to be out of position. This bunker is pretty late. I understand why it's late. It's been a while since he's been able to get some stable ground here at the front. But he's losing so many of his uh, Marines here out on the map before the Banshee even comes across. The thing is, he can't just run away. He has to do. He has to fight like this. It's a unfortunate problem that Marines have against weakened units is they get outranged, or rather, uh, while they get weakening by, or while they're getting weakened by mm. higher range units, is that if you try to retreat, you just take more damage and don't deal any. So you always have to keep fighting until that bunker is ready. So, I mean, it's not like he's really making a mistake here. He just didn't have any other option. He's got a turret ready and a second turret to protect his ramp and his production yeah. building. So this is really important. He's even got three. Ooh, a pause at a very critical he moment paused. here. And oh no, Valdez. I wonder what the problem is. In fact, he may have had a problem for a while, but he just didn't want to pause it while he was micering his Marines, you know. Um, and now that he finally got that bunker up and got some breathing room, it seems like he is going to go for the pause. Let's see what it's about. Yeah. Um, I just want to take a look at some of our, our stats in the game. So he lost, uh, I think, six Marines and two SCVs in total. Either that or five Marines and three SCVs, just looking at units lost. Um, so lost a lot. Maru back at home adding two CCs, one at his natural, one uh, being the third CC in his main base. So he is going to be able to follow this up with three CCs worth of mules. He's not expecting to kill Marine King here. And uh, uh, I think they're saying that guy looks like Kanata, but uh, he doesn't. Not actually entirely sure well, which player that is. A little bit, actually. I don't. I don't even know who that is. In fact, um, he looks familiar to me, but it, uh, someone I'm, definitely knows in the chat. Yeah, you can uh, type that in the chat if you do know. 
So Marine King, he misorganized his hotkeys, and that's the problem here. Yeah. So I think he'll get a warning for that because that is his own mistake. Most likely, but, you know, hopefully he doesn't type GG in the wrong characters or something like that later on, so that'll actually cost his team some serious points. But, MVP uh, players are famous for that, man. Well, Cloak is about to finish. I'm just looking at, like, every possible aspect of this yeah. game right now. One thing is that Marine King prepared very heavily for that Cloak. So yeah. He just knew that the follow-up to all that harass was going to be the Banshees. It's a very popular build, especially for Maru. Maru loves his Banshees in TVT. Not very surprising that Marine King just kind of reads this and goes for the very early turrets. Uh, well, I shouldn't say early, very well-timed turrets here. One kill already delaying the Starport, which is very important because that means he can't get a Viking out. He needs that Starport pretty badly right now. Second kill does go down. He's actually going to hit this Tech Lab on the factory now at a very safe location with literally seven Marines, many of them damaged from Marine King on the map, and no turret to protect this. He's actually not going to be able to finish that Starport. He's yeah. just not going to be able to. In fact, he starts another Starport for that reason, which is also forced to cancel. And Marine wow. King, I expect, might start to get on tilt. And a <laughs> Reaper sneaks in. How did that even happen? Looks like he pulled some of his Marines out of the bunker to deal with this Banshee right now, but it's not going to work out because that Reaper is getting so many kills. Seven, eight. He's not even responding to this. Does he even know it's happening? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Valdez. Finally, okay. he realized after he's lost 13 SCVs in total. And so many Marines. So many Marines going down here. No Banshee, no kill. <laughs> I mean, no Raven, ra or no Viking, excuse me. I'm getting all tied up here. Yeah. He gets uh, away just barely. There's no stim, of course. And he's just dropped another mule. So he's kind of, uh, he's got another scan on his other orbital there, but just barely. He's already lost 15 SCVs. We're gonna have three CCs back at the base of Mari's making both of those into orbitals right now. He's ahead in workers. And, and Maru not, just, he gets himself way, way far ahead with that. He's not done with the harass either. Here comes another Banshee. And uh, let's see how much this one gets done, Valdez. Targeting those gases if he's right outside of range of that turret. Does eat one Viking shot, but that's okay. He's going to maybe lose a Heli in here. Just trying to find any damage he can. Yeah, it's going to be hard to find it here, though. Uh, now that a Viking's out, especially to zone that Banshee out with the detection from the turret. So it looks like Mars is going to back off with this one, but two Hellions trying to come into the natural. So many of these Marines are on low hit points, but it looks like he's going to be able to stave it off. Yeah. Uh, those Hellions very low too. Keep in mind that with the uh, Banshee that he sent home that got repaired, he's going to have several Banshees to push across the map with a, a timing attack that he may go out with. Looks like he might try to hit with 1-1. One, one. Maru is insanely ahead right now. Like, yeah. it cannot be overstated. Look at what Maru's going for, in fact. He's got two engineering bays. He's powering up four more barracks, and he's just going straight up Marine tank here against what Marine uh, Marine King is doing. Uh, Marine King, he adds a second factory, so looks like he will be going mech, at least for now. Definitely trying for it. With all the Marines he lost earlier, it'd be tough to go bio, but it's going to be tough to go anything in this position. Another SCV does get killed here. Looks like Maru is still favoring using the Banshees for harass rather than pulling them back and just simply keeping them as army units. With three turrets and two Vikings, it's actually amazing that he's able to get this much damage done, but part of it is because more than SCVs, he's killed so many Marines, which means there's not a lot of defending units nearby here. Look at that. Gets even another one. It might be even be able to kill these Marines. Yeah, this is what Maru's all about in TVT. He just does this all the time, and he's so good at it. He's just so well practiced at it. You can tell his Banshee control rivals some of the Protoss players uh, with their Oracle control. Very, very similar units, in fact. Yeah, just with how they micro and you know, the two shot workers. Replacing an add on there. Doesn't want uh, another reactor after all. He wants another tech lab. But so this is that timing push I was talking about, man. This is really scary. It's an interesting push. He's got 1-1 one, one on his infantry, but no stim. And the armory is late as well to go for the 2-2 two, two if he wanted to go for it. He's going to move out here, possibly get a position towards the outside while he takes his third base. You know, keep Marine King on two bases while he gets his own third base and not really commit to anything. He's done a lot of damage early on here, but he has to be careful as well. Looks like he's going to go for a big drop, which I do like because the tanks are set up so well. If he ran into these Vikings, that would be disastrous, but it looks like he is going to be able to escape them. He's actually going to draw their attention away using this Banshee at the same time. <laughs> so, so smart. Look Gets everything totally out of position. Here and we go. The drop's coming in. Two tanks here. Would be very well supported by a Marine count that Mar Marine King just cannot counter. Three auto turrets going to make it hard for those Vikings to even land and get involved here. 
And this may actually just be enough to end the game, to be totally frank, Valdez. What is Marinkin going to do? He's going to pull everything up here into the main to deal with this. Not even sieging up his tanks. The auto turret's just too much of a buffer here. And this will get cleaned up, it looks like, by those Vikings. But too much damage has been sustained here. Yeah, and at the same time, back of the natural, this Banshee getting more and more kills. Already up to 11. It's on red HP. He's just doing more and more damage. Doesn't look like he's going to end Marinking here. But he will in about two minutes, trust me. Well, you know, he's not, Marine King is not going to leave the game, but he could, man. That's how <laughs> behind he is. Uh, this yeah. game is very over. The Siege Tank will fall without Stim even, as you are mentioning. Marine King is able to just come in here with this bio, stutter step his way forward here, kill a ton of these, uh, these SCVs, and now just push through. No tanks to be found, and Vikings are starting to fall out of the sky. 39 supply left. Marine King lifts. He's frustrated. GG. GG. At least he types it in English, Wolf. At least he <laughs> does that. Yeah. Um, Maru, of course, going to take that game there against Marine King. Kind of what we expected. The very heavy favorite going into that game. And he just does Maru things. Very exquisite. Very beautiful Banshee control of that game. There were three turrets up. There was even a Viking when he was getting tons of damage done. That Banshee at the natural had 11 kills. Yeah. It's... Uh it was it was devastating damage. Way, way out multitask there. Gotta say that Marine King was a bit unlucky because he went for a CC first. Mars scouted him early, but when you go for a greedy build like this, sometimes you get unlucky, but he did not respond very well. He had a lot of issues with uh, dealing with those Hellions especially. I think he should have just gotten his bunker up earlier. And he, you know, he had to chase those units away or he was going to lose more SCVs, but he was losing more Marines. And when he struggled to defend his bases, not because he didn't prepare, he had three turrets, but Marine King didn't have any way to hold on to that starport, so he had to start a new starport. They canceled it. It was just like everything was going wrong. Yeah. And I feel like Baru, even though he did get that lucky scout, he kind of had the idea of what kind of build he was going to go for from the beginning. He went gas first into just straight up tons of harassing units. Uh, lucky for Maru that. You know, Marine King was pretty close and not at the cross bombs. That's the one big thing. So you can get those units over there very fast. Or as the Marines that were coming out there. Um, but Mara, just a very well-planned build. He probably knew that Marine King was going to go CC first on Cactus Valley, the yeah. biggest map we have. It's just, it's too predictable at this point. You know it's, what I mean? It's too predictable for Marine King. He's, it's just what he does. Even in TBT, a matchup that's kind of dominated by early Banshee Harass, where when you go for a CC first like that, you have late gas, you don't have your star fort up as early, you don't have your Viking out as early. Yep. Well, guys, we're going to take a three-minute break before we get into Rogue versus Yonwa. Stay tuned. <laughs> 